Here's a couple simple bowls that I made. That's cherry, that's laurel. You possibly have seen the video on them. I have one for each. They sit like this all the time and every time I look at them when they're sitting like this it reminds me of something that I want to make. And that's what we're doing today. Ron from Ron's Creations sent this piece of wood along with some others. I think it was uh, early last year. He marked this one, London Plain Sycamore Family. I've not turned either one of those and I've been anxious to do it. Trying to pick a shape for it has not been easy. It's nine inches long and I think it's a little over five this way. I could make a wing turning out of it, but what I want to make today I think will really show off this wood and it'll be quite unique. And it's going to be something that maybe sits on a desk or in a sewing room. At least that's the idea. I need to cut some of the ends off and get a hole for a worm screw and I will be right back. Alright, I cut the ends off. I have it mounted on a worm screw. I don't think I really need that tailstock support, but while I make this round, I think I'll leave it up against it. Turn 725 RPM, freshly sharpened 5H bull gout. Alright, let's keep working that same shape up there. Alright, that's, that's not bad. Okay, I'll be cutting that off when we get it flipped. Now I got to do a little sketching on some paper because this is not going to be your normal bowl. I'll be back shortly. All right, here's what we're going to do. I measured the diameter up here. I made a template. Cut it on the bandsaw. It fits good. I want to transfer that shape down here. So from this way up, it will be the same as that. And that'll make a ball out of it. And you'll see a little bit later why it needs to be a ball. I cut this short up here because I didn't notice there was some cracks and I don't want cracks on the top edge of this. It just wouldn't work out too well. I'll go ahead and do some more shaping here with my half inch bowl gouge. And we'll be doing about 875 RPM as soon as I grab my face shield. I've notched the template here to accommodate the tenon and that will allow it to slip down and get almost all the shape on here. When we're all finished we will be able to flip this around and finish the shape. So now it's just a matter of cutting away and checking it until we get there. And I have some black crayon there to help me with that. Still doing, uh, well we're doing about 900 RPM now.
See all these lines, that's, we just need to keep removing that and pretty soon that template will fit. Most of the turnings we do for bowls do not have to be this close, but because of what I'll be doing here, it needs to be really close. I've got it really close from here to what I would call a center line, and checking with this template, it fits perfect. I decided to go ahead and keep going. I'll cut this away and make it match, and once we have it flipped around, I'll decide where it needs to be cut off. Right there is not really good. It's got a lot of splits in it. It's got a crack here, so I think it's worth it to go ahead and continue that shape. Doing it the exact same way I've been doing it. All right, I'm ready to sand this. And last night I put some of the brown star bond in this cracked area here and a little area right there that didn't go very deep and I just wanted to fill it. So I'll start with the 80 grit with the lathe running in reverse at about 500 because it's a small diameter. And I'll get it sanded up to probably 400 and when I come back, we'll have it flipped around. Just using sheets of paper here because it's uh, pretty small and easy to keep the shape. So I've got it flipped around and I've got the live center against it. This wood is extremely hard. I'll leave that live center against it until I get it flattened and then we'll get it out of the way. We're doing about 690 RPM with a half inch bowl gouge. I was going to stop for a little while and go till the garden for the second time so we could get it planted, but it started raining, so we'll go ahead and hollow this out. And because that's so hard, it's going to take a little while. I have a freshly sharpened half inch bowl gouge and we're about 900 RPM. Because this wall comes up here and then curves back in, I need to match that on the inside and try to keep it parallel. I'll go ahead and use my little hollowing tool just to do that. It'll be much easier. I'm going to get that light back on so I can see. I've got the basic shape now. I've got the walls about 5 eighths. It seems like pretty thick for a bowl this size, but this is actually going to be a bowl in a bowl. And here's where it really gets fun. That's 5 eighths, so i got to line it 5 sixteenths. I'm going to mark that all the way around there, like that. I'm going to turn a step in it, and I think, well, I'm not sure. I've done one other, but it didn't have a curve up at the top. So I can't tell you that this is going to work or not, but I will try. How far down? I might start with looking at a half inch, and then we'll go from there.
Okay, right on five eighths. I need to uh, spend a little time and sharpen that corner up. That definitely, I need the parting tool for that because you've got to have a sharp edge there for this to work. All right, I think it's uh, time to go ahead and try to sand the inside of this. And we'll move on to the more exciting part of this project. All right, I'll go ahead and get this sanded up. Uh, I'll start with 80 grit. I'll do it all with sheets of paper. And uh, when I get done with that, we're going to start the fun part. This will be pretty simple, so I will see you shortly. I have it all sanded up, and I wasn't going to put the finish on until I was through, but I can feel these little cracks. I'm kind of hoping that the shellac based sanding sealer will get in there and allow me to sand it a little bit better. Hopefully it stiffens up those little fuzzies in there. Looks like it actually has filled them. So I think this might work. When I come back, I'll have a. I should have something set up here to show you what I'm doing, and maybe it'll finally make sense. All right, it's time to see if we can find another bowl inside of this one. This is a piece of Leland cypress. About 12 years ago, we had a huge oak tree cut down and two Leland cypresses. I saved some of this wood and. It works good for little jam chucks, which this is an adjustable jam chuck. I'll be putting this in here, and in my tailstock here, I have a, it's called a chuck adapter. It's ball bearing, it's got one by eight threads on it. I thread little pieces and turn them. This is a little cone. I'll put this on here. I'll bring the camera around and show you exactly what I need to do to this piece to get two bowls out of it. Okay, this is how it works. There's a shelf right here. It's 5 eighths below this. If I rotate this piece so that I'm cutting 5 eighths below that shelf, I'll have a 5 eighths step here, a 5 eighths step there. It's going to look like a bowl sitting inside of a bowl. This acts like a ball joint so I can put it where I want. I've only done this one other time and it works, so I'm sure hoping this does. So I'll put a pencil, I've got a pencil line right there that's one and a quarter down. I'll bring this around and it's right on. So that's exactly where it goes. I've got a hot glue gun ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and put a few spots on here. But I will keep that little live center up against it. And that glue sat for a while so it's pretty hot. But it will come off easy enough. All right, I actually went back and put some more hot glue on it because I forgot that I had put a sealer on this and I don't think it would have come off, but I don't want it to come off. I also, I don't know if I mentioned, this is the area that I was dealing with, the crack that went all the way to the top. I picked that side to be the one I cut away because this will cut away and it will go below the other portion in there and those cracks should not be a problem. I'm going to use the half inch bowl gouge. Okay, so this is how it looks. Doing a little bit of wobbling. It 
So I'm at 700 RPM and I've got to take pretty gentle cuts. I'm going to use this diamond point tool. It'll help me get closer to the transition. I think I'm really close. Okay, I think I think I'll just take and sand these little areas here, like that. And it'll take a little bit of hand sanding, but it's uh, pretty much there. And I think it looks alright. Okay, I'm going to see if I can get that hot glue loose so we can get this out. And I actually started by putting some denatured alcohol on this. and It's been sitting for about 15 minutes while I did something else. And it's just a matter of getting a hold of it and pulling it like that and it'll come off in little strips and I can do the next one. So this shouldn't take too long but that's the process right there. I'll just get some more on here and let it sit for a while and I should only need to take a, one or two strips off and then the rest of it will pop off. Well I only let it sit for about five minutes and I pulled on it and it came out. So that's all it really took. And I had put denatured alcohol all the way around everything. I've got two coats of the Zenzer Seal Coat on here. And I'll go ahead and use the Zenzer Shellac. Probably get two coats of this on. It was on exactly the same as the Seal Coat. They're both shellac based. Alright, I'll let that dry, get another coat on, and then I'll have to flatten that tenon off so it has a place to sit. So I'll see you when we do that. I've got it up against the jam chuck here, and I had two options. Continue this shape and make it round on the bottom, or make it flat. She has chosen to make it flat, so that's what I'll do. Half inch bowl gouge, 620 RPM. I stopped so I could get this sanded up and I cut a little bit more and now I'll go ahead and cut that nub off. I've got it about 200 RPM. There it is. Just left a little bit right here to sand off. Okay, I just grabbed a little piece of sandpaper and that cleaned right up. So I'll go ahead and get this signed, get some finish on it, and I'll be back and show you what we've got. Well, here it is. It's called a bowl in a bowl. That's because it looks like there's a smaller bowl sitting inside of a larger bowl. It's made from a very pretty piece of London plain. It has some really nice colors. Look at that. Just very nice. I made this a little smaller just for keeping special things inside. It's five inches in diameter, it's three inches tall, and I tried to continue the radius on the side up and around. I think it gave it a, a nice look. Different than one I did a couple years ago. This is much flatter. I'll put a link in the description if you'd like to see that. I finished it with Zinzer Seal Coat and Zinzer Shellac. And then I went over it with X abrasive paste and polish. And I think it gave it a really nice finish. 
and it's certainly very smooth. This is a fairly simple multi-axis turning and it was sure a lot of fun to make. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, you can let me know by hitting that like button. Also, leave a comment and tell me what you think. I love reading them all and I do my best to answer them all. If you're currently not subscribed, please consider doing so. If you are subscribed, thank you very much. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. I do all types of turnings and I love doing them all. Let me know your favorites. Thanks again and until the next time, see you later.